the Republic of the Union of Myanmar. Once an isolated nation, this formerly closed country is undergoing a transformative course of economic, social, and political reform and revivification. It's a land opening its doors to the world and welcoming its rightful place on the international stage once more. Myanmar is strategically located next to China, Laos, Thailand, India, and Bangladesh, alongside the Andaman Sea and beside the Bay of Bengal. The largest city of Yangon is the economic center, but today the administrative capital city is Naypyidaw. Home to over 50 million people, Myanmar encompasses a landmass of almost 261,228 square miles. Still commonly known as Burma by some countries and international organizations, the Union of Myanmar is finally emerging from its former seclusion and moving into a new era. Following the elections, U Tain Sein became president in February 2011, after four years as the nation's prime minister and as a result of an upper parliamentary election. Since his rise to presidency, President Tain Sein has led the ambitious reforms that are providing hope to the future of this ancient nation. Reforms that are deregulating the formerly censored media, releasing political prisoners, and improving important relations with the U.S. and the rest of the world. One of the recent successes that Myanmar is very proud of is a significant improvement in international relations compared to the past. A second major achievement is that our administration has been making progress in ending the armed conflict, which Myanmar has been experiencing for nearly 60 years, ever since the country's independence. Our government has been working to establish peace among armed ethnic groups, and most of them have agreed to a ceasefire. We continue to be involved in dialogues and discussions with these groups. A third success concerns rural development and poverty reduction. The economic sanctions which Myanmar experienced for almost 20 years resulted in widespread poverty in rural areas. Our current government has made rural development a top priority, and now rural development is increasing while poverty is decreasing. Another major step forward for Myanmar is that the country has attracted foreign investments. Myanmar people have to, to enjoy their political and economic and social rights. So there's a very important role by the U.S. So this is why we try to build the bridge with the U.S. people to build them, especially the understanding between the two countries and two people. We didn't deny Myanmar have the many problems. Myanmar still facing the many challenges. But you have to understand, we have this nearly 60 years of conflict. And you cannot solve everything in the just three years. But I assure you, Myanmar are moving toward the right direction and all the stakeholders and all the people are decided to move in forward. There's no turning back of the, our reform process, no way. The government's strong commitment to reform is already starting to reap rewards for the country, a trend which is predicted to speed up significantly. European and Australian sanctions have been almost entirely lifted, while American sanctions have been substantially eased. Myanmar, this golden land, is well into its new golden era. Myanmar is evolving socially, politically and economically. The nation has been instigating an economic overhaul since its transition to a civilian government in 2011 and is now striving to attract foreign investment and integrate back into the global economy. But what really makes Myanmar such an attractive place to invest in? 
One thing is that Myanmar, most of the Myanmar people can understand the English language. That is a one point. Another point is that we have the ample of workforce in Myanmar. If you polish or if you uh, train them to be skilled workers, very easy to move those unskilled workers to skilled workers. That is a great force for them. Then energy sector is moving on, moving on. I uh, I know that last last year 15 percent growth in energy sector. That is the electric power. What I mean is, then they are going on. And another thing is that we are the junction of China, India, and the ASEAN and South Asia. That is the great potential for our country. For the legal field, it's like this. We follow the English common law system, so it's quite similar to the American system. And we have the company law, which is very similar to other countries. And legally, the, our legal uh, system is quite strong. The only thing is sometimes what happens is when foreigners hear things that uh, well, our legal system is not good and foreigners are prejudiced, that's not true. Because I can uh, give an example where even a foreign company on, on a point of law won against one of the ministries even. The central bank is also in the process of optimizing Myanmar's presently limited finance sector. Along with other institutions and businesses, the nation is calling for expertise and technology to help pick up the pace of its financial sector development. This is a unique opportunity for banks and companies to pioneer new systems in Myanmar, such as mobile and electronic banking systems for citizens without banking access. The private means of private financial institutions and things like that, yes, we are also uh, working very closely with you know, the, the private financial institutions uh, you know, around the world. And of course, you know, the, the nine private financial institutions, the banks have been already selected to, you know, operate the branch in this country. So our, you know, cooperations and relationships going to be uh, much more strengthened. But at the same time, we are also collaborating a lot in many ways with other private sector banks and financial institutions um, from many countries. The government has also created the necessary regulations and is now seeking the necessary assistance. A new FDI law has made every sector an accessible one for inbound investment. Since the last elections, the foreign investment law has been amended and it has been made more friendly towards the, towards the investors. And now we, the investors can get five years tax holiday and they can lease land for 50 plus 10 plus 10. And in some cases, if necessary, they can even mortgage the land with the agreement of the landowner and the, and the MIC. The country's central lowlands and steep, rugged highlands have naturally established agriculture as the biggest contributor to the economy. However, Myanmar's rich natural resources, including gold, natural gas and oil, its young labor force and close strategic proximity to Asia's booming economies are fast attracting foreign interest and investment. Main advantages of Myanmar Moga because you know our country are famous for the natural resources. You know, we have the gold mine, we have the ruby, sapphire, jade, and there are so many precious stones and the, everything are the very good quality. So if a new government, they need to encourage for the import and the export policy and the, uh, the, there, there should be the very world defined and the commitment policy and the rules and regulation will be come out. I think from the, these natural resources may become the, uh, able to produce the value added item and it will raise our country to get the national competitiveness in the future. Diverse opportunities can be found throughout Myanmar's many industries and it is becoming increasingly open for business. Concerning our investment priorities, our country's economy is based mainly on agriculture. So attracting investment in agriculture and agricultural production is a priority. Myanmar also wants to attract investment in human resources development. 
and in the tourism sector which is steadily growing. Along with tourism, Myanmar's energy sector and power infrastructure offer significant investment advantages. These are some of the main investment opportunities in Myanmar today. In order to attract foreign direct investment from the U.S. and from other developed nations, you know, it is important that we create favorable investment and business climate in the country. That is why we plan to, you know, develop the special economic economic zones in the country, where the hardware infrastructures can be, you know, established within a very short time. But what is more important is soft infrastructures, you know, with you know different policies and streamlined procedures uh, that are totally different from uh, complicated procedures uh, that are being practiced out, uh, out of the zone. So I think these special economic zones can attract you know, th th more investment from the developing nations to come to the country. I think the investment from the country like US, United States and also the European country not only bring the uh, financial value but it's also bring the value on the good governance and the corporate social responsibility and the good business practice. And you can share and transfer the technology to the Myanmar people. So this is very important for us. The government is particularly keen on attracting investment in labor-intensive sectors, such as food processing, garments, assembly, and heavy industry in a bid to support poverty reduction. For the prospective U.S. market, this includes exciting potential in agricultural commodities, an export of expertise and equipment in transport, infrastructure, energy, and mining. We define lifestyle. Golden Palace Jewelry. Exceptional jewelry for exceptional people. Max Myanmar Holding Company has grown from scratch to being one of Myanmar's largest private sector enterprises. At Max Myanmar, we are helping Myanmar grow and develop. We are active in civil construction, mechanical engineering, hotels, tourism and finance. We are especially proud of our commitment and achievements in corporate social responsibility. Whether it's building hotels or our activities in the banking and finance sector with our AYA Bank, we believe it is essential that businesses contribute to the improvement of Myanmar society. For us, doing business is not solely about profits. It's about love for our country, people, and helping improve living standards and quality of life. Max Myanmar. Global Treasure Bank is one of the prominent public banks and has a network of 100 branches throughout the country, with a new branch opening almost every month. We have played a significant role in the sustainable development of the country's economy. We welcome international partnerships for further development. Global Treasure Bank is the bank you can trust in Myanmar. Yangon's urban landscape is being transformed as Myanmar opens its doors to the world and preparing for democratic elections in 2015. With over 25 years of experience in Myanmar's fast-growing construction and engineering sector, Neo and Mint Brothers is helping build a brighter, sustainable future in Myanmar. And we're keen to work with U.S. property developers to make this a reality. Neo and Mint Brothers. MAGA Group. Bringing Myanmar a cosmopolitan lifestyle and progressive ideas with international investors and a global mindset. MAGA Group is building Dagon City One a luxury mixed-use development in the heart of Yangon with spectacular views of Shwedagon Pagoda.
contributing to the economy as well as CSR. MAGA Group welcomes partners in its drive to take Myanmar to the next level. Myanmar's vision of reform and regeneration has ensured construction and real estate development is an integral part of the government's policies and future success. This is a sector of vast potential, spanning throughout the country and of increasing economic importance. Myanmar has introduced a significant number of new projects and developments alongside important upgrades of once neglected areas. The government welcomes interest in greenfield developments and joint ventures and is implementing pioneering new environmental impact studies alongside potential new projects to ensure sustainability. Originally, it's the economy concentrated on farming and natural resources, what we call the primary industries. It's like other developing uh, countries that rely on primary industries. It will have a very large scale urbanization, which will create a huge demand for different types of properties, including residential, commercial, and hotel. Infrastructure wise, the country is having a very high growth. Demand for infrastructures like uh, highways, uh, bridges, and also different facilities will be in very high demand. So I think in the next two decades, Myanmar will experience a very high growth and high demand as far as different type of construction works and properties are concerned. The construction and infrastructure sector is imperative in helping Myanmar achieve its reform targets and sustain its positive growth. The government has publicly stated that it views this as an opportunity as they have the advantage of optimizing and learning urban development techniques from developed neighbors to then establish itself as a modern conurbation. Actually, the vision of our ministry is to improve the road connectivity between Myanmar and also the ASEAN countries and neighboring countries to be a standard like others. And also, maybe in the construction sector, uh, we would like to get the safe and sustainable development of the improvement of our country. And also, maybe we would like to give our people for better living and adequate housing like that. The construction and real estate sector is largely concentrating on residential developments. The country is becoming increasingly urbanized, and the landscape of the largest city of Yangon is increasingly dotted with new construction work and projects. The Department of Human Settlement and Housing Development is currently building 30,000 new low-cost homes named the Dagan Sekin Township on the outskirts of Yangon. The department is putting in place further ambitious building plans for the 2015-16 fiscal year. Meanwhile, the industrial construction sector has been steadily making progress, with commercial projects such as hotels, shopping centers, and office space adding to the sector's growth. There are many planned projects in the pipeline, including the upgrade of the Yangon to Mandalay Expressway, as well as the construction of a new airport that will replace the current airport of Yangon, but also the main seaport of Yangon has been expanding. It already houses a multitude of port facilities and companies and its deep sea terminal will undergo further expansion over the coming years. Myanmar Economic Corporation was established in 1997. MEC operates in general trading and manufacturing with the slogan of capability of quality products such as steel, cement and sugar. Inwa Bank of MEC provides financial aid to less developed regions and loan facilities to farmers for growing their crops. Today, MEC is one of Myanmar's leading conglomerates and plays a crucial role in the national economy, creating job opportunities and improving living conditions. MEC has many CSR programs and is committed to the sustainable development of Myanmar's economy. And Mechtel, the mobile phone division of MEC, has been connecting people throughout amazing Myanmar. Let's cooperate for a brighter future. MEC.
Myanmar National Airlines, the flag carrier of Myanmar. From our historic headquarters in Yangon, we bring together the history and culture of our country. At the heart of our airline is the grace, charm and warm hospitality of our staff. We fly to 26 destinations in Myanmar and are launching international services with brand new aircraft. Come and fly with us and experience Asia's warmest welcome. Experience history. Experience culture. Experience luxury and comfort. Experience warm and friendly services. Whether you want to visit mysterious Bagan and its ancient temples, or going on a business trip to the newly built capital of Myanmar, Naypyidaw, you'll experience style and elegance. From the magical waters of Inla Lake, to the stunning beauty of Taungu and its epic dynasty. No matter where your travels take you in this amazing country, experience the best of it in KMA Hotels Group. KMA Hotels in Myanmar. Myanmar's beauty and cultural charm is increasingly capturing the attention of international tourists. And the government's overarching goal for this integral sector is to raise awareness of the country and implement important change. Since the regime was introduced in 2011, Myanmar has seen a year-on-year -year increase in visitors. And the government has big ambitions for the future of its tourism industry. Now, it is striving to achieve a 25% annual increase until 2020, when it's hoped the nation will attract 7 million visitors per annum to an economic contribution estimate of 7.4 billion US dollars. Not only you, we should look the growth of the country, you have to be aware. If you can go step by step, steps, you can monitor not only the growth, but also the negative impacts that can happen in the industry. So Myanmar has no problem. We go on step by steps. Today we have only, this year we can have only three millions. So we can move up to five million, seven million, ten million, something like that, because it's not a city states. You know, it's not a landlock. We we can disperse the um, <clears throat> the people coming to Myanmar to every destinations across the, the country. Tourism is fast becoming a strong economic driver and increasing interest worldwide has helped support progression in hotels and tourism offerings. Much like the tourists, investors are taking interest and the government is keen to ensure the nation supports sustainable growth with development plans. Perhaps this is no revelation when you look at what this tropical landscape has to offer. Myanmar captures the very essence of Southeast Asia. Bagan is, is one of the historical sites. If he is interested in looking the world heritage sites, recently we are nominated, we were nominated to be a world heritage site in Myanmar. So we have three destinations in the central part of the country. So it depends on the desire. If you are ecotourism travelers, you can go to the many, many uh, sites. We have about 21 sites open up for ecotourism travelers. Although relatively new to the international world, Myanmar is rich in history and has two priority candidate sites listed with UNESCO. The former capital city of Yangon remains the gateway for many international arrivals. This historic city is home to the Shwedagon Pagoda, a golden-topped pagoda estimated to be over 2,500 years old and the origin of the country's Golden Land nickname. There are so many places that I can offer and I wish every one of them that comes to Myanmar can spend enough time to start with the Shui in Yangon and also the ancient city Bagan 
that has arrays of pagodas your eyes can see, and also an interesting inlay lake. And we have this Jaichiyo, the Golden Rock Mountains, and we have beautiful, beautiful beaches and a lot of uh, interesting places, spectacular scenes and everywhere. That's is so many, many that you can see. One of the major tourist attractions is Inlay Lake, a beautiful highland lake inhabited by the Intha people, famed for their floating farms and impressive lake rowing. Although popular, the sheer scale of the lake and its villages ensure no feeling of overcrowding. But perhaps the most iconic and grand of all Myanmar's ancient attractions is Bagan. Set alongside the Irrawaddy River, this ancient city and its sprawling wonder of 2,230 temples is said to rival Machu Picchu or Angkor Wat in sheer brilliance and beauty. The best way to see this astonishing place is from the sky. The five-star Chatrium Hotel Royal Lake in the heart of Yangon. Enjoy our spectacular lake and pagoda views and luxurious amenities. From six restaurants and bars to a fabulous outdoor pool, modern spa facilities, Chatrium Club Lounge, and much more. Whether you are traveling for business or pleasure, Chatrium Hotel Royal Lake Yangon is your ideal home away from home in Myanmar. Discover astonishing destinations throughout amazing Myanmar with Yangon Airways. The Tongwin Garden Hotel is located in Dagon Township, near to the city center and all the major cultural attractions Yangon has to offer. A brand new contemporary four-star hotel designed to appeal to business and leisure travelers who want to get more out of their stay. Tourwin Garden Hotel has an extensive range of health and spa facilities including sauna, indoor jacuzzi and massage treatments. Our rooms offer all the comfort and style you'll need with breathtaking views of Shwedagon Pagoda. You'll find three restaurants that offer both local and western cuisine and our meeting rooms and magnificent ballroom can accommodate up to 500 guests. Torwin Garden Hotel. All you need for a comfortable stay in Yangon. Situated on the shores of spectacular Inya Lake, L'Opera is proud to offer quality Italian dining in Myanmar. Our world-class chef makes the finest dishes for our guests. You will experience a world of romance and enchantment at L'Opera Italian Restaurant. It is a poignant time for Myanmar. After years of seclusion, this nation is rightfully staking its claim as a player in the global economy once more, is striving to realize its full potential. President Obama visited the nation in 2012 and again in 2014, becoming the very first American president to do so. Together with President Utain Sein, in 2013, the pair signed a bilateral investment protection and trade promotion agreement for the two countries. Having good relations with the United States is very important for Myanmar in attracting foreign investment. We want U.S. investors to trust Myanmar. And we believe that the more the two countries are in contact with each other, the better they will understand and trust each other. Relations between Myanmar and the U.S. are currently very good. The U.S. has lifted some economic sanctions on Myanmar, even though some investors still have a negative image of our country because of incorrect information coming from the opposition and from those with negative ideologies. In spite of this, 
Relations between the US and Myanmar are improving and sanctions are being lifted. However, negative media coverage that presents an inaccurate picture of our country is still limiting the flow of foreign investment to Myanmar. International investors have taken advantage of opportunities in Myanmar in spite of this negative image, including General Electric from the US. We hope that this US television program will help potential investors understand what Myanmar is really like and will show what an attractive foreign investment target Myanmar is. When American people come here, they can see what how we are going to develop the tourism in a very sustainable and responsible manner. But, you know, we still need many things to do. So that's why when they come here, they can also contribute to, other, to many sectors, like infrastructure development, like product development, like destination management planning, and also the awareness of the country as a destination. Myanmar is a very resourceful country with talented and sincere people at an excellent location. It is an investment market that no sound businessman can afford to miss. This nation is metamorphosing through its fundamental precipice of change. It's a land ready to welcome the world, an ancient world, but one with modern goals and future aspirations. Myanmar, the golden land, moving into a golden era. <laughs>